glimpses by Penstroke. Various two mutations. So, did you see Gerald Sombart during his visit? Bulwark glanced to his left, looking across the cement driveway that separated him from his fellow guard, Wild Willow. The pair was standing guard at a chain link gate, their army fatigues and body armor bathed in the light of a nearby lamppost. Bulwark turned his eyes toward, back towards the horizon, looked at his rifle adjusted to the expensive wetlands and distant swamps that surrounded the research facility, was squatted in the midst of mud and muck like an ill-bred cement road. Personally, I was off duty. You know, resting up to prepare for the riveting and action-packed night shift. I mean, you never know when the Frogman might finally decide to rise up against humanity. Don't go waving around your rifle like that, when Will said flatly. It isn't a toy, Bullock chuckled, nodding his head. <laughs> Don't worry so much. I have the safety on. He aimed down the sights of his rifle, scanning the tree line. So, what was the general doing here anyway? Didn't seem like his usual visits. When Willow remained relaxed, not even looking at Bulwark's question, it was something related to the research in the back labs. Bulwark whistled, his lower his rifle. Whoosh. Oh, I get it. We don't have the clearance to know what's going on. <laughs> Personally, I just find that makes me want to know more. I've seen the door to the back labs. That is some serious security. But they are wanting to keep people out, or keep something in. If we were supposed to know... We did know, Woodwill said, a sliver of irritation in his voice. Of course, we get a nice detailed briefing, but come on, Willow, you've been here way longer than me. Bowler flies a smile. I'll promise to shut up if you tell me what you heard around the base. That's a promise we both know you're capable of keeping, Willow sighed, but after a few moments, nodded his head. Fine, from what I've heard, they've got Nightmare Moon back there. Bowler visibly flinched. The answer hitting him like a punch to the gut. Bullshit! They don't have something like that in the back of the lab to this punk place! Willow shrugged. That's what I heard. Now about your promise. I can't keep that promise after you drop a bomb on me like that! Bullock snapped. They can't possibly have Nightmare Moon back there. Willow glanced at Bullock's direction. Why not? Because she's dead! Dead? What makes you say that? Don't you remember? She got killed in that event a few years ago when she terrorized up Manhattan until those other freaks brought her down. It was all over the news. Bullock shivered a little, the memory creeping up in his mind. I was in basic training when it happened. We were watching everything happen on TV. Dude, I was scared we'd be called into duty against that monster. She's been dead before, Wildwell said. Twenty years ago, when she first appeared at that high school, everyone thought she died dead. Nah. Someone like that? One of those freaks? They ain't easy to kill. And that's exactly why we wouldn't keep her here! Bulwark said as he used his thumb to point his shoulder towards the labs. We don't have nearly enough guns, bullets, or bodies here to guard anything that serious. Besides, I've seen some of the things Dr. Nexus takes into the lab when he comes back into the city. Will he be bringing children's books to Nightmare Moon? Then what do you think is back there? Bulwark smiled as he squared his shoulders and stood a bit taller, raised a hand dramatically. Elementary, my dear Willow. It's clearly mutant monkeys that have become hyper-intelligent. Willow rolled his eyes. Why in the world would hyper-intelligent monkeys need children's books? Hey, everyone has to start somewhere. Now, who wants a mud mud pie? Balrags and Wild, Wild Will punched, bringing up their rifles in the direction of the unfamiliar voice. Yet, before Balrag could focus on the pink-haired woman she was gone, in her face, something heavy and wet slapped against his face. Balrag dropped his gun, letting it hang off his shoulder strap as he used his hands to clear the mud. He looked over to Willow, seeing it also had a mud pie thrown in his face. What was? Balrag began, only to be cut off by a loud pop. A firework burst above the facility and was soon joined by a folly of others that were lighting up the sky in a rainbow of colors. Hey, I can see a rainbow as it falls and hits the ground. We have intruders on the north fence! All exterior patrols confirms under precision! The pre-party is dying, and it's gonna be a doozy! Thanks, Glacier, go grab our guests tomorrow so we can start the real party back home! 
The word stands over the squad, stared psychic link and into Sunset's mind. She lifted a hand to her ear, touching her earlobe. It was a simple physical gesture. During a surge, only the thoughts she wanted broadcast were sent to others. Understood. We're heading in! Sunset pulled herself up from the mud and grass in the marshland, head slowly around to assert that there were no other guard patrols on their way. She then glanced back at her partner, gesturing her hand before jogging towards the gate. Two young women stepped into the light of a lamppost. Sunset was clad in a lightly armored, one-piece uniform that was kicked in mud. It was mostly black, except for a few orange accents and a V-shaped metal buckle. Come on! Sunset placed her hands on her chin and a tingling gate. Give me a second, Phoenix. I've got mud on my glasses. Twilight came stumbling up, wearing the same style of uniform as Sunset, though hers had blue accents. She was struggling to clean her glasses with an eyeglass cloth, which was already fairly saturated with mud. We have mud on everything, Glacier, Sunset said, before focusing back on the gate. Her ants became surrounded with red aura, and the sexes on the fence beneath her palms deformed. Sunset waited until the metal had started glowing red, before digging her fingers in and flexing. With the same effort a normal person might open a heavy door, Sunset spread apart the heated metal to create an opening in the gate. But the nice thing for me is that mud tends to turn to dirt real quick. Sunset stepped through the opening and looked down at her uniform, where a lot of the mud had dried and caked into the place because of the heat coming from her special ability. She pressed off the largest chunks before looking back through the hole. She snorted at Twilight, who was busy putting her glasses back on. The glasses in the area around her eyes were both pristine, making them stand in stark contrast to the mud that clung to the rest of Twilight's body. Well, you ever considered going to window washing part-time? Twilight smirked as she chugged a cleaning cloth back into her pocket. Well, no, but I'll add it to my possible career list right at the bottom. She so approached the hole, hands started to glow in a blue aura. They touched the still hot metal heads of the hole. Almost immediately, the metal stopped glowing. Twilight waited until the metal frosted over before stepping through. Hey, sometimes the bottom of your list is where the good stuff is. Or should I remind you of what was at the bo uh, top of your codename list? Hydrochlorofluorocarbon? Such an acid seemed motion with one hand. The pair broke into a jog, crossing the asphalt paved exterior grounds of the research facility as they headed to the nearest visible door. Since it flicked her wrist, solving a small surge of fire to a lamp persistent over the door. The ball popped from the extra heat, expunging the doorway into the darkness as Sunset and Twilight pressed themselves against it. Okay, we're, we're doing good. Now call Radiance, she should have been able to read the facility's layout for some of the soldiers' minds by now. Sunset's hand began glowing again as he raised it towards the door, door, door's handle, steadily melting the lock away. A few moments of silence passed, and when Sunset didn't hear any further words in her head, she glanced over at Twilight. Her admittedly inexperienced friend had her eyes closed, and face was scrunched up with concentration. Though Sunset took particular notice of where Twilight's hands were, at her sides. Uh, Glacier? Sunset used her free hand to gently reach up and tug on her ear low. Twilight peeked open an eye, and then blushed as she raised a hand to her ear. This time her thoughts rang clearly in Sunset's mind. Sorry, still getting used to this. It's alright, Sunset thought over the mental link. Trust me, with Phil a second on the team, you want to be there in a physical trigger to any second link. Sounds like you two all having too much trouble on your end, Verity's voice said over the link. Twilight gently pushed on her glasses, repersisting them on the bridge of her nose. Only real hiccup was some m messy, miscellaneous mud. Oh, believe me, darling, I know what you're talking about. I warned Zab that she was making things too wet around here. But no, she wanted a real storm. It'll take me forever to get our uniforms clean. Verity sighed, voice falling quiet for the mental link before returning a bit more focus. Now, where are you two now? We're at our second ten point, Twy answered. How are things on your end? Steel hose is smossing, 50 second is saucing. There was a crack of thunder, and a flash of lightning raced down from the sky, connected with the ground on the facility's north side. I am honestly, you just heard what Zap is doing. All the while, Salarator and I are marinating a mutt. Sunset finished the door lads. She hooked her fingers through the hole in the metal door, and pulled it open with her left hand, and reached for your earlobe. Well, just imagine it's a mud bath at the spa. 
Oh, have you nailed a few cre creepy crawlies in the mud of the spa? So Sid chuckled as he let the twilight lean in the door first. <laughs> That's why I said imagine. Now, can we get our guidance? Yes, of course. Eddie said over the link. Your world's are looking a bit more elegant, Mama Tatney. Sunset moved in through the door and found herself standing with Twilight in a loading dock that was empty from apart from a few stacks of crake and a forklift that was tucked into a corner. Yet, even as they looked about the space, it began to change. Accompanied by a familiar tickle on her brain, Sunset saw a lust purple velvet rug taste cheap at her feet and began unrolling itself. The rug climbed up a nearby staircase, rolled a few yards, then made a hard left before disappearing through a closed door. Twilight adjusted her glasses before glancing over at sunset. I fail to see how this is better than something simpler and more tactically relevant, like an arrow. It's either let Radiance do this or design our medicine outfits. <sighs> Considering what I saw of her first design sketches, dealing with fabulous mental protections is the lesser evil. So as it said, as she and Twilight began to jog along the projected rug, quickly moving to the door it had disappeared through. The moment Sunset's hand touched the door handle, a thunderous boom shook the facility, forcing Sunset to brace herself against the door, keep herself on her feet. After she regained her balance, Sunset's hand moved to her ear. Radiance, what was that? Well, it seems that there was a snake of some variety that hopped into our little party. One of the soldiers saw it, saw that it, and now Salarator is tossing around sheep like their pillows. Ready groaned as another thunderous boom shook this building. I appreciate a desire to step, but could you do, do me the teeniest favor and perhaps speed things up a tad? Samarita is starting the fight and does tend to escalate things more than we like, and I'd rather not deal the tanks tonight. At Philly Silk, you get the quiet time mat ready, and we'll try to pick up the pace. Sunset began pushing open the door as she glanced back over her shoulder at Twilight. After all, with Salarita outside, it's not like we'll have to worry about the guards inside. Phoenix! Sunset looked back at Twilight when she sighed, saw the fear in her friend's eyes, and quickly turned her head. In the hallway behind the door was a squad of four soldiers. The weapons already raised. Sunset's muscles tensed. She dug her head, bringing her hands up in front of her face. She heard the first pulse of rifle fire. Sunset knew there was no way they could miss it, so it rains. Yet, instead of feeling the sting of bullets piercing her skin, she heard the crackling and popping of ice. Sunset dared open her eyes. The doorway was frozen solid, a thick sheet of ice separating her from the soldiers in gunfire. She quickly turned her head to Twilight. Twilight was panting heavily. Her glasses were askew. As he held a trembling hand up, palm pointed at the door. Sunset realized, as she took a two deep breaths herself, that was she sinking as much as Twilight. She stood slowly, squeezing her hands together to calm herself. She wanted to panic, to freak out, but doing that right now wasn't going to help them. Good reflex, Sunset finally managed to say, forcing a smile. Twilight only nodded her head. Yet, both Twilight and Sunset flinched when they heard bullets striking the far side of the ice barrier. Twilight took a step towards the door, power surging. The ice thickened, growing beyond the door frame and consumed the door on nearby walls. Glacier, easy. Sunset placed a hand on her shoulder, making a conscious effort to keep a calm tone in her voice. It's okay. The door is frozen enough, Glacier. They won't get through there for a while. Let's find another way out of this room before they try and flank us. Twilight nodded, a panic posture relaxing enough that she began to move. Sunset patted her friend's shoulder once more before jogging ahead. She reached another door, cracked it open, and took a peek inside. When they didn't see any immediate threats, she opened all the way and stuck her head into the connecting hallway. Okay, no guards this time. Do you remember the plan from here? Twilight nodded, I do. I studied the missing briefing very thoroughly. Sunset broke into a jog, heading deeper into the facility with Twilight falling a few steps behind. Wouldn't expect anything less. We just need to find Radiance Protection again. We'll be back on course. Keep your eyes peeled for that gaudy purple rug. Sunset glanced back for a moment. Don't tell her I called it gaudy. Is this it, Phoenix? Sunset skipped to a stop and jogged back a few steps to the intersection in the hallways. Sea and Twilight spent the last few minutes making their way deeper and deeper to the facility. They had dodged patrols and left behind walls of ice to ensure they didn't get stuck up on. They had found and were soon following Verity's fabulous illusion, but at one point, the rug just up and evaporated. That moment preceded an earth-shaking crash and explosion. The girls outside were still alive. 
Someone would have said something over the psychic link if something bad had happened. Still, the longer the operation took, the more dangerous and desperate the facility's garrison would get. Their goal, however, was to went in sight. Twilight spotted a large, thick metal door with deep red markings all around its metal frame built into a wall that appeared to be made of the same materials. Yeah, this is it! Sunset said, and she and Twilight talked up to the door. As soon as he was close enough, Sunset reached out to touch it. The metal felt very cold, like the inside of a fridge. Sunset's hand began to glow, but unlike the teen league fence outside, she couldn't get the mail to heat up. Just like her contact said, this door, this whole section of the facility, was built especially to keep me and our stronger friends out. I bet even Sal Rager would have some trouble with it. Sunset took a step back and regarded the door thoughtfully. They didn't really want us to get into the back labs. Hopefully, they didn't anticipate our latest recruit. She turned and gave Twilight a thumbs up. You've got this, Glacier. Twilight drew in a deep breath as she brought her hands to her chest. She clenched her fingers into her fist as she held the air in her lungs. She then exhaled, her whole body appearing to relax as the temperature around her dropped sharply. <sighs> Give me a few minutes. Twilight adjusted her glasses and stepped up to the door, placed her hands on the surface. Since it turned away, thus as frost began to form on the door's exterior. She held up her hands at elbow height, palms facing upward as a pair of fireballs formed in her grasp. She clutched them like baseballs, the searing heat feeling like the flutter of butterfly wings against her skin as her eyes scanned the surrounding hallways. Behind her, Sunset began to hear the door straining under the fast freeze. The components were groaning and scraping, the different metals of the door contracting at different rates as the temperature dropped lower and lower. The door would eventually give way, when Sunset heard the clatter of boots getting closer. She could tell it wasn't going to be soon enough. Sunset reared back, and the moment she saw a flicker of movement, she rolled her shoulder forward and threw one of her fireballs. The flaming fastball soared through the air, eventually smashing into one of the facility's walls. It burst on impact, setting a cascade of fire and sparks in all directions. Since it heard the coughing and panic shouts, she even saw one soldier poke his head out from the corner. Her next fireball flew down the hallway, exploding from within inches of the soldier's head. Come on, boys. I know I'm hot, but there's no reason to be shy, Sunset shouted. She threw a third fireball while forming a fourth. This one would be different. She passed it between her hands a few times, letting its size grow to that of a soccer ball before eventually letting it drop to the ground. She then swung back with her right foot and kicked it. The fireball sailed towards the hallway intersection. It slammed against the wall, bursting like a Molotov cocktail. A cascade of flames poured out from the impact point, leaving behind a line of fire in the hallway. How's it coming, Glacier? Sunset asked, glancing over her shoulder. The door was looking nauseously misshapen, and ice was expanding the gaps between the door and its frame. Just a bit longer, Twilight replied. Sunset nodded and looked back in the directions where she had been harassing the soldiers. The fire was still lingering at the nearest hallway intersection, but she didn't hear or see any soldiers. For a moment, it seemed like she chased it off. But then she heard it, the sound of metallic footsteps and crunching tiles. Not to put pressure on you, Glacier, but a bit longer, it just got too long! Sunset formed a fresh pair of fireballs in her hands. Further down the hallway, past the flames, Sunset could see it step into view. It was a mech soldier, a human clad in a modern suit of armor that made them a walking tank of superhuman strength. This mech soldier was carrying a proportionally large riot shield and a sock baton wired directly into the suit's power system. Great! Sunset said as the soldier began marching towards them. With Saddle Ranger outside, they got permission to use mechs. Isn't that nice, Glacier? Wonderful, she said through great teeth. Oh, man, and they're the, they're the lame type of mechs. They're the human-sized mechs. You know, the one, ones that don't have really cool machine guns and beam rifles. Hi. All I'm saying is, if you're going to use mechs, use Sentinel-sized or Gundam-sized or get the f back out. Sunset so took out took our shoulders and then wound up through a fireball. The next soldier easily deflected it with the riot shield, continuing his march towards the pair unabated. Despite the apparent ineffectiveness, Sunset continued her barrage. She even tried kicking a large fireball at the soldier, but he continued marching. It was like trying to stop a train with snowballs. Interesting metaphor. He was past the intersection where Sunset had chased off the first squad of soldiers. 
few more seconds, and he would be close enough to put the shock baton to use. That baton itself told Sunset that someone higher up had given the order that she and her friends were to be taken alive. It was nice not having to deal with guns, but regular soldiers with guns would have been welcome trying to fight off even a barehanded mech soldier. Okay, big boy. That's enough! Close enough! Sunset brought her hands together as she began to go bright red. She planted her feet, squared her shoulders, and braced herself. She then felt a kick, a column of fire rushing from her hands and consuming the hallway beyond. Her feet skidded a little on the tile, the force from her flamethrower pushing her back. Still, she kept pouring on the heat, but the mech soldier kept on coming. He tossed his right shield aside, walking through the flames like he was simply strolling against a stiff breeze. Sunset grunted, taking a cautious step back. He see had to give the military credit. These newer suits were more heat-resistant than the last versions. Hmm. Property of S.I. Huh. Fuck! They got, they got Stark Tech! Why couldn't they go cheap and buy something from Hammer? Sunset, move! She heard a shout from Twilight and dared to glance behind her. The door was at its failure point, like a coiled spring, the metal was struggling against the ice, trying to retake at least something close to the original shape. Sunset nodded to Twilight and looked back at the soldier. She poured on the heat, creating a fresh series of fire to consume the whole hallway. It was close enough to make the soldier pause, to push him back just a little, and that was all Sunset needed. She drove to one side and looked back at the door. Twilight pressed her hands on the nearby wall. Her ability to causing the ice around the door to expand just a little further. She pushed the door past its failure point. It buckled and snapped like a rubber band. It popped out of the door frame and shut down the adjoining highway. Sunset and Twilight both flinched when he heard the loud mechanic clang, which was followed swiftly by the sound of something heavy falling to the door. Sunset peeked around the corner, smiling to sight. The deformed door was several yards away, and the next soldier was spread across the floor. He was moving. But the servos and pistons around his chest area were crushed. He wouldn't be posting a threat anytime soon. Hmm. Okay, so maybe they did buy from Hammer Tech. See? This is what happens when you buy from Hammer! Why don't you try buy buying for Star Tech once in a while? Or Wayne Enterprises! Or LexCore! They know how to build Max! And they know how to build build really cool ones! Okay, Wayne Tech doesn't know how to add weapons to those mechs, but they do know how to build mechas. Oh, that looked like it hurt. Twice says she took on an anxious step towards the soldier. I didn't kill him, right? Sunset shook her head as she moved past Twilight and through the now open doorway. I've seen those things get tossed around by Saddle Ranger and the pilot survive. He's going to be sore and probably have a lot of bruises, but he'll live. Still, great job with the door. Thanks. Twilight says she followed Sunset to the other side. So, according to the plan, I'm supposed to stay here and keep the door sealed till we're ready to leave, while you go get our targets. You sure you're going to be okay by yourself? If things get rough, I'll call for backup, Sunset assured. Just stay frosty. I'll be right back. Twilight rolled her eyes as he placed one hand on the door frame. Her power is causing the ice to begin forming over the gap. Wow! Haven't heard that one before. But, what's going on? Why are there alarms? Nix was up on her bed, clutching a teddy bear to her chest. My heart! <laughs> she had been sound asleep after a long day of testing when Darkstar Nexus came into her room. He'd been acting strange all day. Normally, he was the only one who could take the time to play with her. But today, he acted like all the others. He was distant, especially when the mean old general was around. She didn't like General Sabra. He always had a scary look in his eyes when he was watching her. I can't explain right now. Thus, please, put on your shoes. Dr. Nexus said as he hurriedly tossing things for Nix's small dresser into a garbage bag. All of her clothes, books, toys, everything that was hers in the world was in that one small dresser, and all of that was going to one large garbage bag. Nix pouted, but crawled to the edge of her bed, still clutching her teddy bear. She reached down below the edge, grabbing a pair of plain white shoes. Everything she owed was the same cylindrical white as the labs outside her room. Her shoes, clothes, the seats on her bed, even her teddy bear. Nyx began putting on her shoes, slipping them onto her feet without socks. She slipped on her right shoe and was beginning to put on the left when she heard a knock on the door. Her eyes glanced up and quickly drifted to a Dr. Nexus. The stores were in place. One hand held open the trash bag, the other clutched a ball of socks. 
Nexus dropped both things and quickly moved to the door, pressing himself against the wall as he reached into his coat. He withdrew a gun, and Nexus instinctively clutched her teddy bear tighter. She didn't like guns. She knew what they could do. Daryl Sombra threatened someone in the lab with the one once. It was really scary. Still, with the pistol in his right hand, Nexus reached for the door handle, and was left and essentially altering the lats. The door swung open a little, and Nick saw with Dr. Nexus' expression shift. He wore a relieved smile as he put the gun back into his holster on his hip. I was worried when I heard that there were intruders on the north side. I thought something had gone wrong. No, that's just our distraction. Though we did run into a bit of resistance on our way in. We need to move quickly. Just let me grab a few more things. I've already got all my research knowledge and wiped the surface as best as I could. Everything is in that briefcase by the door. Dr. Nexus stepped away from the door as someone else came into the room. Nix looked at the woman, her eyes drawn to her vibrant red and yellow hair. The research facility was almost entirely white. Almost everything in her room was white. Yes, she had seen some of the colors around the lab and in the picture books Dr. Nexus brought her, but she had never seen such vibrant colors. Who are you? Nix asked, keeping her teddy bear close, close to her chest. The woman looked over at Nix, and for a moment there was uncertainty in her eyes. She looked as surprised and scared. Nix all that fragrance in too well. Was everyone she met for the first time wore that expression? Some people never stopped looking at her like that. This woman, however, soon smiled and went over to her bed. Hi, you must be Nix. My name's Phoenix. How do you know my name? Phoenix gestured back towards Dr. Nexus. He had briefly stopped packing inserts into his coat pockets. He eventually withdrew a thumb drive, and after glancing it down briefly, he slipped it back into his pocket and continued to the trespasser door. I'm a friend of his. We're here to take you away from this place before something bad happens. Don't worry, I think you'll like where we're going. Since it reached into one of her pockets, gently removing a plastic baggie. She opened it and took out a piece of paper, which she unfolded and showed to Nyx. Hey, that's one of my drawings! Nyx said, recognizing her crayon doodle. It showed a picture of her outside, under a happy yellow sun. She was standing on a grass near a tree in a happy doggy. She had never seen an actual dog before, but one of her books was about a big red dog. In memory of the author of Clifford the Big Red Dog. Dr. Nexus gave it to me. He says he'll really like to go someplace where you can run on grass. Well, we have a really big lawn where many of my friends live. There's grass, trees, and other kids your age to play with. I would make a strike commander joke here, but I'm too into this fic to do it. Nix looked up at Phoenix, her match and dancing, all things he had only read about in her books. She could see them. Nix looked over at Dr. Nexus, who was emptying the last few things from her dresser drawer. Can I really go outside, Doctor? So, let me get this. Spell Nexus in this world is essentially the Dr. Hamilton slash... Professor Wells of Earth 2 of this world. Nexus Saint shut the garbage bag. The gun still ran Nix. Just stared at her a second, as if the question confused him, but nodded. Yes, yes. Grass, trees, sun, water, bugs, lions, tigers, bears. You'll get to see it all. But only if you hurry and put on your shoes. Nix needed no further motivation. She put on her remaining shoe in a few seconds and jumped down from her bed. She was practically dancing on her feet. She tossed her teddy bear into the air and giggled as she held it aloft, making it float and dance above her. She then winced, quickly letting her bear drop from her telekinesis before looking over at Dr. Nexus. Sorry, I didn't mean... I know I'm not supposed to. Whoa, easy there. Being sat down beside Nex. It's all right. Those rules don't apply anymore. In fact, I'm kind of like you. I have a special gift, too. Would you like to see mine? Nyx nodded furiously as he picked up her teddy bear. Phoenix smiled and gently twirled her hand. Fire danced from her fingertips. Nyx's eyes went wide, and her gaze followed the dancing flames. Wow! Pretty cool, right? Phoenix took as she stood back up. So he looked back at Dr. Nexus. He was slapping his pockets, mouthly silencing out the words as he touched each pocket. You ready, Doctor? Phoenix asked. The tone of her voice was a lot firmer than the ones he used to talk to Nix. Yes, 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 I have everything. 
Nexus slung the garbage bag over his shoulder, and quickly picked up his briefcase with his other hand. Phoenix nodded, then looked back to Nix and offered her hand. Hey, have you ever had a piggy ride back before? No, what's that? Phoenix Nix asked. Phoenix reached her hand a little closer, and after a moment's hesitation, Nix gently took it. Well, a few seconds later, she was riding on Phoenix's back. Her legs hooked through the woman's arms, while her own arms held the back of Phoenix's neck. She leaned in close, looking over to peek back shoulders right from my shoulder. Phoenix held to the door, Nix is following them. As they walked, she glanced over her shoulder to look at Nix. Things might get a little scary, but I need you to be brave, okay? My friends and I won't let anything happen to you or Dr. Nexus. Now hold on tight! This is very troubling. Celestia says she looked over to research notes from the facility. She was in her office, sitting at the desk as he clicked through some digital data. The computer was the one bit of visible technology in the otherwise classically decorated room. There was not a wall that did not have a bookshelf, and all the furniture was either polished wood or fine leather. You're telling me? His voice drew Celestia's attention away from the monitor. She glanced at her side, reaching out, and scratching Spike's head. The wolfhound greedily accepted the pet, but soon, he and Celestia were focusing back on the screen. So, did Professor Luna call in sick before or after she heard the mission was a success? Spike asked. After. She waited until the girls were out, and we heard a confirmation from Nexus that he destroyed as much of his resources as he could. Celestia stood from her desk. Walking to the large bay of her office that looked out of the lush green front lawn. Classes were out for lunch, and her students were enjoying the warm weather. Their two most recent acquisitions were out and about as well. Dr. Nexus and Little Nix were being given a tour of the grounds by the girls responsible for their rescue, her best team. Amongst the group, Pinkie Pie slowly turned and waved in their direction. Celestia waved back, having long gotten used to the girls' impressive sixth sense. Well, it's good the research is gone, though Luna was as, as eager to go on the mission herself, but we found out who we need to rescue at the same time. Spike said as he followed Celestia to the window. I can't blame her. Celestia watched as Nyx walked through the grass barefoot. No! Nyx! Stop that! Stop being adorable! Nightmare Moon left a scar on this world. It's a part of my, her life my sister would soon forget. But she faced it constant reminders. Whenever the governments of the world talk about the need to regulate, imprison, or go to war against our kind, Nightmare Moon is always one of the examples they bring up. It's on the news, it's in the propaganda. <sighs> okay! Take the thing you people might want to use! Ding! The Ace X-Men uh, really cool uh, rock track? Ding! Or the 90s one? Take your pick, ladies and gentlemen! And now for a new Nightmare Moon to be genetically cloned in a lab. Well, this Nightmare Moon seems a lot sweeter than the original ever was, Spike said. She ran me ragged trying to ride me like a horse this morning before breakfast. I suppose that explains why you're hiding here. Celestia had managed a brief smile, but quickly withered as she continued to look out the window. Hopefully, my sister won't avoid the campus for more than a few days. Even when she does return... I doubt she want to associate with that girl. That, and I don't doubt we'll be getting a visit from our old friend Harshwani very soon. She says a friend, Spike says he brought up a paw to scratch his neck. I mean, who want to be friends with a government suit who only comes over to threaten our homes and lives? It's a political game, Spike. Our superiors who dislike what we do here have to make a show of force. But they know doing anything against us will blow a number of their own secrets as well. Though I hate to say this about her. Nexus Spell Nexus just became our two best assets. Off the books genetic research, experimental cloning, and unauthorized human testing. If that was released to the public, it'll be a PR nightmare. I just hope those two can be happy here. I'm sure they'll be fine. Dr. Nexus will probably be happy as long as Nix is. And she's almost happy and infectious. I mean, she's not that different from Twilight or anyone else here. We all needed a safe place. It's why you built this school. You're making me very this close to singing the theme. Yes, it is. Celestia reached over and patted Spike's head. She turned away from the window. She returned to her desk, closing the research files and bringing up the school's registry. A few minutes of tapping and clicking, and a new student had been enrolled into assigned to a room. With the deed done, Celestia stepped back, 
Lay her eyes wander to the window again, where she could has a glimpse of Nick's running and playing on the grass, experiencing a warm summer day for the first time in her life. Welcome to Celestia School for Gifted Children. X-Men, X-Men, save the day, save the day. X-Men, X-Men, coming your way. Magneto's evil horde comes through the thunder, but there's one team who'll never stay, fighting with the force of thunder. You asked for it! She said, only for her computer screen to light up. A circle with a V appeared on the screen. Okay, I got another one. A video feeds began to stream across the desktop. Celestia's brow furrowed as she read over the screen, bringing a hand to her head. Cross of the moon! Everybody looks at me, and I notice that you're... What? You don't like the Japanese opening? <laughs> Rest out of mind, forming a second link with the spe seven specific students. Valkyries, to the Situation Room. Variants end. What might it take for Nyx to be born in the Equestrian Girls universe? Oh my god, a few, a few successes. Bloop! Luna's illegitimate daughter. Lost or orphan wa waif with a uh, special ability. A little lost orphan who uh, got hit by uh, the equestrian magic and her powers went wa wild. And now Sunset has to work hard to keep an eye on the little girl. Somebody misusing equestrian magic on, on the poor little defenseless little girl named Nyx. And Sunset has to take care of her. And in case you haven't not noticed, a lot of these are revolving around Sunset. <laughs> Nixon start in the Starfleet world. Analysis two. Nix would of course be shunned by most of Starfleet and including Grand Ruler, considering her bloodline. After all, they never believed in redemption. If Discord became evil in their world, <laughs> if you read Fall Starfleet, you know that's bullcrap. Then what's to stop that little one? What's to stop Nyx from going crazy? Of course, Nyx will feel more shunned and hated than ever. Especially when it comes to the Corpians who stare at her. They're just waiting for her to become the next Nightmare Moon. Of course, her friends will always be there by her side. But he says it of Daphne. Daphne and Nyx will start spawning a much similar relationship to how Lightning first started out. But of course, the biggest bright side of her life would be her mother, Twilight Sparkle. Of course, Nyx gets worried every time Twilight goes out. After all, Starfleet is a military force, and Nyx, the girl who wants to be a part of the military, knows how bad things could get. Daphne continues trying to reassure her, after all, it's Starfleet. Nothing bad ever happens. And Nyx will have to spend... Most of season two having to deal with that. While at the same time watching things like Crystal's return, the fake Crystal's attack, the coming of Bertillo, and also dealing with more of, of Neo Equestria's laws. All the while, Nyx is watching as her extended family begins to grow farther and farther apart. Which then leads to the events of season three. And her greatest nightmare will begin. <laughs>